Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your reluctant Gringo back again with another video. Today, we have to talk about the recent article from Forbes magazine. It absolutely demolishes Disney Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, and Kathleen Kennedy. Detailed, methodical, this thing reads like a criminal indictment of the Disney board. And after you understand what is in this article, you may think like I do. The recent proxy vote between Iger and Nelson Peltz needs to be null and void and investors given a chance to vote again with the actual facts about their investment. We're going to get into it because it really gives us three key takeaways that, let's face it, in the real world, if you or I had such poor results at our job, we would have been fired a long time ago. One day, I hope we get to find out exactly what it is that Kathleen Kennedy has on Iger or the rest of the board, what dirty secrets or compromising photos she has locked away that allows her to keep her job when things at Lucasfilm are so obviously in shambles. We know this because the researchers at Forbes now have access to SEC and corporate filings that previously were unavailable, and they paint a real dim picture. Before we get into it, let's just call out the lead right now. The financial statements tell us the profits from Disney Star Wars have not yet covered the actual cost of buying Lucasfilm. Four billion dollars to be exact. And of course, factor in that lovely inflation and after over a decade of owning the brand, financially, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, and all of the other IPs that are included therein have become a financial liability for Disney. And this brings us to our first key takeaway. During the proxy fight with Nelson Peltz, Disney's financial wing created a 67-page presentation that applauded all the achievements of Bob Iger to investors so they would vote for him and against Nelson Peltz. Turns out, when you dig into the fine print of that 67-page presentation, that piece of financial data that most investors looked at as justification for voting for Bob Iger, well, it's all bullshit. And even Forbes calls the methodology used in calculating the profit and loss as questionable. Why? Because the report given to investors does not include a comparison of how much Disney Star Wars has made since it was purchased compared to the actual cost of purchasing Lucasfilm. That seems like a very important piece of information not to include when talking to the people who are financially backing your business. When reporting about it, Forbes is being nice. Let's just call it what it is. It's bullshit. In fact, it may even be illegal. Not that anyone in the Department of Justice is going after Bob Iger anytime soon. He's on their team. But with the way Forbes frames it, there are omissions in the financial data Disney provided to investors. There are questionable conclusions and projections that Disney provided to investors, which, by the way, are the same accusations being made against the former president in criminal court in New York City right now. So if you're going to call a spade a spade, then you better be ready to call them all out on their bullshit. So yes, it looks as if Disney manipulated information for investors to secure the recent proxy vote in Bob Iger's favor. I wonder what Nelson Peltz thinks about this. It will be interesting to see what he has to say and if he's right now talking to his lawyers and the Florida Department of Justice because where there is smoke, there's usually fire. The second key takeaway is this. Star Wars has made minuscule profits for Disney. I know. How can that be? The Force Awakens made $2.1 billion alone. Once again, creative accounting and the bullshit that keeps Hollywood afloat. Disney, like many other studios, takes advantage of the United Kingdom's generous cash back credit program when you choose to make a film on location in that country. However, because of the intricate accounting practices involved in making this 25.5% cash back UK credit happen, films like The Force Awakens, which was filmed in 2014 and released in 2015, still has costs attached to it. As far as the financial minds at Forbes can figure out, this film alone cost almost $600 million to make. And as far as I can tell, they still did not factor in the marketing budget, which would have been at least $100 million. In Forbes' very conservative calculation, The Force Awakens made $2.1 billion at the box office. Half of that goes to the theaters, the rest to Disney minus the cost of the film. And that leaves only about $560 million in profit. Even if we lop off another $100 million from that, $400 to $500 million is still a nice profit. However, it only goes downhill from there. Rogue One. Net profit was only $281 million. The Last Jedi, net profit $346 million. The Rise of Skywalker, only $89 million in profit. And with marketing factored in, that film is probably a loss in reality. And finally, Solo, negative $91 million. Now, I do not claim to be a financial wizard, but I do know how to spot a trend, and this trend is on a downward slope. The most shocking number is this from Forbes. When totaled all up using actual common sense math, Disney's five Star Wars films raked in $1.2 billion in profit. That's $2.8 billion short of the actual purchase price for Lucasfilm. In other words, holy shit, 
Under Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm has become a financial burden. And the article even references other Lucasfilm properties that have failed to turn a profit, specifically Willow, a D-plus series that was effectively erased from the streaming service because it was so bad, and Indiana Jones, which lost a conservatively estimated $150 million and probably more. The third takeaway from this article is this, and this is where we, the general public, get to use our common sense, because the article may not come right out and say it, but it is heavily inferred. Star Wars is officially on life support along with Lucasfilm. They are not dead yet, even though last rites have been administered. There are still plans to release more films and more limited series. The Acolyte, the Ray Palpatine movie, the Mandalorian movie, but it doesn't look good. Hell, even the video game licensing wing of Lucasfilm is facing massive fan backlash with the upcoming Outlaws release, and for good reason. There's no other way to cut it, folks. Numbers, when looked at with clarity and honesty, do not lie. Lucasfilm under Kathleen Kennedy has been an absolute disaster, and it's only a matter of time before the creative calculus by which Iger and the board at Disney has been propping up their bottom line with caves in on itself and investors are left holding the bag. And like all financial articles and commentaries, I offer my own transparency in this. I sold my Disney stock a long time ago, and I shifted my 401k contributions away from any mutual fund that held Disney stock to protect myself from future losses. I used to be a Disney shareholder. I was a believer a decade ago, but the financial well-being of my family and my own golden years are too precious to risk on a company that is mired in the practice of diminishing returns. And that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. How do you see these numbers? Do you think the accounting practices of Disney are ethical? And how long do you think Kathleen Kennedy can keep her job before investors wake up and realize that they've been taken to the cleaners? Thank you for watching. And as always, I'm your reluctant gringo and from south of the border, salute and I'll wait home.